I'm Big Cow and welcome to my world. Today another recent video games pickups video. Just before we get started you may notice there were some empty spaces behind me where some games were currently in the middle of getting everything out of my room so we can decorate it. Yay! So most of my collection is currently stored away in boxes. So that's why the background looks more empty than usual. So let's just get started then with uh, some pickups. Firstly, a uh, Nintendo 64 game, been after this for a while, but I always get it confused with another game. Not in the sense that I think that's what it's called or anything, it's just um, um, Hybrid Heaven on the N64. And this game, uh, it's always a case of, I know I own one of them, but which is it? And I can never remember. Uh, it's Hybrid Heaven that I own, and this one is one that I own now. Body Harvest. This of course is from uh, Rockstar Games before they started the Grand Theft Auto series and it kind of plays sort of like a, a very early prototype of Grand Theft Auto. You've got a big open world, you can hijack cars and you shoot things. You can kill civilians if you want but the main idea of the game is to kill aliens and yeah it's, uh, it's actually pretty fun. So I got this for nice and cheap, picked that up very happy with that to add to my collection. Just going to clean my glasses because they're filthy and there's a spot of dirt on it that's annoying me. Yes, this is what I look like without glasses. Ah, much better. Next, treated myself to a 3DS game I've been after for a long, long time. Finally get around to playing it. I own it on the PS2, but there's just something about playing these types of games on a handheld that appeals to me a lot more. Which is odd considering I just played uh, the 11th game in the series last year on the PS4. But yeah, it is Dragon Quest VIII. Uh, what's the subtitle? Journey of the Cursed King. Yeah, so the 3DS uh, remake sort of thing, graphics and things look a little bit better. you got all your voice acting and everything, sounds great, looks great, plays wonderful. I'm having a bunch of fun of about 19 or 20 hours into it now, so I'm hoping... I'm only a third of the way through based on other games in the series and even ones before and after it for how long they are. I will say though, I went into it expecting it to immediately just be fantastic because it's often claimed that Dragon Quest VIII is one of the best in the series. But for me, it really took about five hours before it started getting interesting. It's just how it is. I thought it was a very slow starter because I remember... Um, Dragon Quest 7 a lot of people complain because it took like, uh, at least in the 3DS version, it took like an hour before you get into your first battle and apparently the original PS1 version is worse, it takes even longer. This one throws you straight into battles, yep, nothing wrong with that, but uh, there's a lack of any real story or character development for hours. So kind of the opposite of what Dragon Quest 7 did, that you know, had a big story right from the beginning, you learned about the characters and it just took a while before you got into a battle. This does the opposite, straight into battle, not much story until a big sort of major incident happens when someone dies and then it really does pick up from there and having a ton of fun with it so far. So yeah, not the Dragon Quest series. Okay, next... Um, Believe it or not, I've been buying some Dreamcast games. I know, it's just that uh, I'm, I'm slowly coming around to the Dreamcast. A little bit more than usual anyway. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, it has a lot of multi-platform games I love on the PS1 or the N64, whatever. But they're, they're usually a bit better versions, you know. They've got a higher resolution, they look nicer, they might have a, a smoother frame rate, you know, sort of thing. So it's like, okay, if I'm... I've got I've got a Dreamcast and things like that. Maybe now I should sort of try and look into getting games that I already enjoy and know I enjoy, but get them on the Dreamcast to have a slightly better experience with them. While of course uh, still trying to get some of the exclusives for the system that I actually want. So I'm going to bundle here. Let's see what we got first. One of my favourite PS1 games of all time, and that is Toy Story 2: Buzz Lightyear to the Rescue. Really, really, really good 3D platformer. One of the best non-Mario Mario 3D platformers, in my opinion. When I mean like that, think of what Mario 64 is. You go into your level, you've got a big open world level, and then you've got like five or six you know, stars to collect here. It's uh, each level based on something from the film, obviously. 
like Andy's house and then you've got the neighbourhood where the toys would run through, you know, Al's toy barn, things like that, and you have to collect pizza um, planet tokens or planet pizza tokens, whatever it's called. And yeah, it's very similar to Mario 64, but it doesn't have Mario. It's got Buzz Lightyear and it's awesome. So this just looks and sounds better on uh, the Dreamcast and the PS1 version and of course the N64 version as well. My only issue with it so far is that uh, I'm trying to play it through um, a new sort of upscaling device. I'll do a video on that at some point. Um, I was wanting to get it done soon, but with the whole decorating thing, I just don't have the time really to get that video done. But yeah, I'm putting this through and it will not display through my game capture device. It comes up saying it's some weird resolution that it doesn't recognise. If I pull it straight into my TV, Plays fine, yeah, but uh, I had to put it through my old adapter, which just you know stretches it in widescreen, doesn't really upscale, looks really bad, unfortunately. So that's the footage you'll be seeing now. But playing it without the game capture looks wonderful. Also, do not try and play it with the analog stick on the Dreamcast. It's just terrible, terrible. <laughs> Next up, uh, another game that I already own on PS One, and I think the N sixty four as well. Um, and that is Rayman 2 The Great Escape and this is supposed to be sort of the definitive edition of it um, for that generation because the PS1 apparently had missing levels I think um, and the N64 I think had the levels but didn't have the voice acting and this just bundles everything together looks and sounds really really good and just plays really nicely on the Dreamcast again just the same game but better you know looks nicer a bit smoother and things like that Another one of my favourite PS1 games. It was also on the N64 as well. This is actually the third, the this is the fourth, yeah, the third copy I own because I don't own it yet on the N64. Would like to. I got it on the PS1 and the Game Boy Advance. Now the Dreamcast and it's Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. And again, this is supposed to be sort of like the definitive version because it just looks and plays smoother and nicer and things on that. You know, the higher quality on the Dreamcast, but it's still classic Tony Hawk's. And thankfully it still plays really well even with the crappy Dreamcast controller which will be getting fixed um, at some point because I backed a Kickstarter for the uh, the Retro Fighters Dreamcast controller they released the Brawler 64, the N64 controller I've shown off on here before as well as a Mega Drive one uh, which I also got and showed off uh, in a previous video they've done a Dreamcast one unfortunately because of this whole coronavirus thing uh, production in China slowed down or basically stopped so just got to wait for everything to get sorted with that so they can get back into production and ship them out and I can't wait for that because I can't wait to play the Dreamcast with a good controller because I think that will really elevate my experience with the system and lastly as far as I'm aware Dreamcast exclusive no, no, I'm, just, I'm pretty sure this was also on PS1 as well, but I never played it on the PS1. I actually played this on the emulator not too long ago, because I decided, okay, Dreamcast, like I said, multi-platform, fine, but what about the exclusives? So I downloaded a bunch of ROMs, played through a bunch of them that I thought I was going to like and pick up, and oh boy, my want list uh, just shot down in size, because a lot of them just weren't very good. This particular game though was fantastic and when I saw it to buy, yeah, I had to pick it up and it's called Millennium Shoulder Expendable and it's basically kind of like, you know, the, a 3D Contra game, you know, run and gun, uh, it's not a twin stick shooter because there's only one stick for starters but yeah, you, you um, really really fun to go around. This is basically what the, you know, the new Contra game that came out recently, what was it called, Contra shit show or something yeah this is basically what it was trying to be like this is fantastic really fun ended up i was playing through like on the emulator first and before i knew it i'd clocked up over an hour in it just like what the fuck am i doing i only wanted to play like 10 or 15 minutes just to see if i was enjoying it and I, I did so as soon as i saw this come up on the website that i bought the others from snagged it straight away i actually made three separate orders on this website because they kept adding new stockings it seems like someone had just you know gone to the the, the store wherever it is and unloaded their dreamcast collection and there were just a ton of games and yeah this one really really fun and now for some switch games so we'll start off with ooh, yes yes we'll start off with this one 
it is Wild Guns Reloaded. So this was obviously a game on the SNES and was through a Mega Drive slash Genesis version, I'm not entirely sure. Basically sort of a, a Wild West style shoot 'em up, you know, you you just got the one screen and you move your, your aimer around and shoot people. You know, but, oh, boom. Right. Oh, um, Captain Toad. Treasure Tracker, it's also inside. Because <laughs> I think I remember when I was testing it, I was playing through Captain Toad, so I took that out, put this in, just left this in the case, just to keep it safe. But yeah, yeah there it is. Um, yeah, so you can buy this digitally, of course, but uh, physical didn't come out here in Europe, so I imported it from America. Well, I got the import from America, but I bought it on a nice UK website. Um, Base.com did have it, and just I was umming and ahhing over buying it when I finally decided to it was out of stock, and I think I got it from 365 Games. Um, I'll try and leave a link in the video or in the description if I remember. I'll look up to see if it's still there. Uh, it cost me £26, uh, so I was happy with that for a physical. It's a really, really fun shooter, although I'm terrible at it, uh, which does tend to happen. Uh, there's quite a few games I really like, really enjoy, but I'm terrible at. Uh, just uh, Captain Toad there. Next, another Switch game, um, and this is uh, again sort of an import because it came from America. It was a Limited Run. I've had it for quite a while now, and that is Blazing Chrome. It's Run and Gunner, and it's basically again uh, Contra, about the 2D Contra, but without the Contra license, and it is. Fantastic, really, really cool. As soon as I saw this come out, it's like I was gonna pick it up, and then I saw they were doing a limited run physical release. Like, now I'm gonna wait, get the physical release, and I did. So, nice inside, get one of your little limited run cards. Mine's number 535, uh, and just a little booklet. Uh, not Nothing too special with that, but uh, still very nice to own. And yeah, that is a really, really fun run and gun Contra style game. Next, PS4 game. I haven't had a chance to open it and play it because I let my brother and his girlfriend my PS4 because they were considering getting one but wanted to sort of, you know, just sort of test one out for a while and see if they would actually play it if they bought one. They didn't want to waste the money on it. And after about a day, I think it was decided they were going to get one. And they did. Uh, so when my brother had the PS4, this arrived in the post. God of War 3 Remaster. Still sealed. I've got my PS4 back now, but I haven't had a chance to play because I've been busy um, storing things away. Um, so one of my games this year that I want to play is the new God of War. It was in my video, Games I Want to Play in 2020. Check that out, link in the description below, whatever. And of course, before I can play that, I need to finish the original series, which God of War 3. I got halfway through it on the PS3 a couple of years ago. And then I got distracted with other games and never finished it. So I realise now I won't remember what the hell happens. It's probably best to start from scratch. If I'm going to start from scratch, why not get the remastered version? It only cost me, I think, £7 something. Brand new. So dirt cheap. Very happy with that. Can't wait to uh, get into it and finally play it. But probably going to be a couple of weeks now until after my room's finished. Okay, we've got some Nintendo Wii games. <laughs> First up, because uh, I've been getting sort of like a lot of bunch of game show, quiz show type uh, games. I've been really enjoying them. They're just novelty sort of things and maybe fun for parties one day if I actually have, you know, friends over. Yeah, anyway, so this one is based on a TV show I don't even remember. I don't think I saw it. Noel Edmonds hosted it and it was called Tele Addicts. It's basically a bunch of questions about TV shows. And you have different ones where you might see a clip and you have to answer some questions about that clip or you just get a picture. You might have to guess the year for a show, when it started, when it finished, things like that. And it is incredibly difficult. I sucked at it. The first time, that when I recorded the footage for this, I played around, I got 18 points. That was pretty good. I played about six or seven times when the, I didn't record the footage. I was just playing to see what it was like, see what other questions came up. And I got progressively worse at it. <laughs> Terrible, but yeah, it's a decent enough game. You got your video footage, you got Noel Edmonds actual video footage talking to introduce the categories and things. But my main issue is it when you're like answering questions, and everything, there's just no sound. It's just it's just dull presentation, you know. It'd be nice if there was a little bit of music in the background while the clock go, the timer goes down to answer questions or something. Just something really small like that makes a huge difference. Cause it's just so quiet and boring. But yeah, uh, decent questions on lots of TV shows, really fun. Next, uh, pick this one up, been after it for a while, Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles. 
and it's uh, you know a railgun shooter. So kind of like the other Resident Evil Survivor style games, other except this one's actually supposed to be really good. And I played it, and it was definitely really really fun from what I played of it so far. It takes place on a train as well, which I don't know. Is this sort of the on rails version of um, was it was it Zero, Resident Evil Zero or something? Um, I, I don't know. It just that's what immediately immediately what I thought. I've not actually played Zero. Need to get on that. But yeah. Uh, so it's better than the Survivor games, even though I enjoyed the first one on the PS1 back in the day. Yeah, that was just me. But yeah, obviously with the Wii Remote, aim, shoot, fire, really, really fun. So glad to finally own that collection. Next is some games I got in a bundle. Um, have I showed these off? Uh, I can't remember if I've showed these off or not already. Really don't know. Well, tough. I got these in a bundle for you know a game that I actually wanted, and it was just cheap to buy the game plus like five others in the bundle. Um, so the ones I already had, I traded in sex for some store credit, and got uh, Prince of Persia, Prince of Persia Rival Swords with it. Not the game that I wanted, but it was part of the bundle. And you know it's okay. It's a Prince of Persia game, except it controls a bit iffy on the uh, the switch um, not the switch the Wii from what I've played a bit so far it doesn't use motion controls which is nice but the controls just don't really feel that good on it unfortunately uh, another game that was in it is Transformers the game has a good idea it's basically oh, you transform me so it's like a mech beat em up style but uh, the main issue for me is the camera the camera control is atrocious uh, you just can't seem to you know, find your enemies or turn around and aim. There's like certain bots that you can only um, damage by throwing things at them. And good God, uh, it gets impossible at points where you have to pick something up and then it could be behind. You have to turn around and try and find him, try and aim at him. And it just takes so long and the camera doesn't follow you and you can't see him. And by the time you've done that, it'll hit you and you drop whatever you're trying to throw. And it's a pain in the ass. The game I wanted for it was Wii Party. This finishes off my uh, Wii collection. I seem to recall talking about this but uh, I don't know if I did it on camera or not. Or I might have deleted it because I know I recorded something a while back and deleted it because it was terrible. Yeah, uh, Wii Party, a bunch of different party games of course, um, like chopping things or running. Yeah, lots of different things. So basically um, I wanted this to add to my Wii games collection, you know, Wii Sports, Wii Fit, Wii Play, uh, Wii Party of course, so at some point in the future I want to do a video showcasing all of the Wii, Wii games. <laughs> yeah, so Wii Party is like Mario Party but without the Mario characters and I'm sure it's fun. And lastly, some Xbox games. First up is a game that I remember seeing on a Hidden Gems video from Metal Jesus years ago like five years ago or something crazy like that and he showed it off talked about how good it was but I looked it up and it was expensive really expensive at the time it was crazy and then I just happened to see it a couple of weeks ago on sex 350 so I thought screw it I'm picking it up and that is Greg Hastings tournament paintball yeah it's basically a first person shooter but in paintball form, so you've got you know, your paintball locations and things. If you've been paintballing, you sort of understand what I mean. If you haven't, uh, watch the footage. Unfortunately, I didn't really enjoy it. It just seemed really weird. Uh, it, it only seemed like you had like four or five paintballs to shoot before you ran out, and reloading didn't seem to do anything. And I couldn't see any indication not on the, the screen. I don't know if I was just viewing it wrong. Uh, but I couldn't see any indication of how much bullets I had left or anything like that, so it was really weird. If I could figure it out, it might be a lot better, but yeah, from what i played, first impression so far, not really a fan of it, to be honest. Then, picked up um, these two games, were on my uh, want list for the Xbox. Uh, first up is Area 51. Uh, yeah, aliens or something on Earth, and they're being tested on, and they escape, and of course you have to lead a team and go shoot them. And the uh, the main character is voiced by David Duchovny. 
Just pretty crazy, you know, he's known for the X-Files and things, so kind of cool having him go as a soldier, shooting up aliens, and uh, there's also a guy uh, voiced by Powers Booth, or Booth Powers, one of the two, I think it's Powers Booth, uh, I pretty much know him for being a, a villain in um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and he was also in a brief cameo in the first Avengers film as one of the guys who is in the uh, the World Council overseeing S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, but, spoiler, he's Hydra. Yeah. So, uh, Area 51 there. Um, nice alien shoot again. And lastly, for the Xbox, we have Enclave. I didn't even remember what this game was, but it was on my want list, so I assume I wanted it. And it's basically, you know... Um, I guess kind of like a an action adventure game, but you're set in the medieval time, so you've got swords and things, and obviously there's some enemies and skulls and whatnot. And yeah, I guess it's kind of like a a Dark Soulsy type game in that you know sort of setting and dark and things and you know swords and you know, that kind of that's sort of the best way to describe it. Modern times, obviously, you know there are probably better examples, but that's how I can best describe it. But without the super difficulty of Dark Souls. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it seemed pretty fun from what I played. Control's not the best, a little bit sluggish here and there, but it's definitely something that I could uh, continue playing. So those are my recent pickups. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of my pickups. Let me know what you've got recently, and I'll see you again next time.